In this last uh, lecture on the Reconstruction Era, we're going to talk about the Republican response to the KKK and some of the efforts by white Southerners to prevent the black African Americans from participating, and also the end of Reconstruction, how the period eventually ends, and that many of the advancements that were made in this period were ultimately um, undone. Right? And so in response to the KKK in the early 1870s, the radical Republicans in Congress during the Congressional Reconstruction Era passed these things called the Enforcement Acts to enforce the, the 14th and 15th Amendments, right, which protect the right of African Americans to vote and, and the right to certain, uh, you know, privileges that all, all, all citizens should have. Uh, so things they do, they, they send down supervisors to supervise the elections of people to make sure African Americans are allowing, have the opportunity to vote. They also are using federal force and Klan hotspots, right? So they're actually sending soldiers down to make sure the Klan is not terrorizing African Americans. Ultimately, this is ruled unconstitutional in 1882, which is unfortunate, right? And it kind of is the final death knell for Reconstruction. Uh, and this highlights the constant back and forth that is present in American history, even up to this day, between federal power versus states' power, right? In the Civil War, it was states seceded over their right to have slavery, right? When the federal government, you know, and the federal government fought against their rights to secede. So that's one issue, right? And during this time, it's like, who has the right to be in charge of elections and who has the right to govern and what goes on in the state itself, right? It's this back and forth um, kind of swings during Reconstruction from the federal government having a lot of control to the federal government losing a lot of control in the southern states. So we talk about the end of Reconstruction. There's really four main things here, right? The scandals in the Grant administration, economic depression, uh, judicial setbacks to the Supreme Court making certain rule, rulings, and then also the election of 1876. And so we're going to go through each of these kind of briefly to have an understanding of what happens when, when Reconstruction ends. First off, we have these political scandals in the President Grant's administration, right? So he, not necessarily himself, but people he surrounds himself with get involved in financial scandals uh, that tarnishes his reputation and tarnishes the reputation of the Republican Party. And people start to become distrustful of the Republicans in power. And when they're distrustful of them, they are less likely to support them. And it also just distracts from the efforts to rebuild the South. In 1872, in the midst of these scandals, the Freedmen's Bureau, uh, the legislation that supported it, expired. It was no longer uh, legitimate, and then no one ever re renewed it. And so that kind of is a serious setback for African Americans who relied on the Freedmen's Bureau for financial and educational and healthcare support. Uh, on top of these scandals, right, there's also an economic depression, and it's called the Panic of 1873 because it occurred in the year 1873. Um, following the Civil War, there's actually a huge boom, uh, booming economy, right? Because people were investing heavily in rebuilding. Um, but too many people took on more debt than they really should have, right? And when it, eventually all this debt leads to bankruptcy, right? And so one man in, in particular invested heavily in railroads, a man named Jay Cook. Um, his firm invested in this stuff and also dealt largely in government securities and government debt. Uh, and then they went bankrupt. And so that caused a panic when a lot of the government money was kind of no longer there because the bank went bankrupt. Uh, people began to panic, and many other people began trying to sell off their stuff or collecting their debts. Uh, and when people couldn't afford to pay, uh, it led to a widespread economic collapse uh, called the Panic of 1873. And it was about five years of economic depression, right? High unemployment, poverty, um, failed businesses and banks, and so on. Right? Again, this is also when people's economic livelihoods are in... in Jeopardy, right? They're less concerned about things not directly applying to their lives. So many Northerners kind of get distracted from Reconstruction because they're so concerned about their own economic well-being. Additionally, right, and this kind of further alienates many people from the Republican Party, is the debate over what were called greenbacks, right? And we know them today as money, right? Currency, dollars. Um, and during the Civil War and following the Civil War, in order to pay for everything, the government began printing money, greenbacks, right, um, that was not supported by the gold standard, right? So say, you know, the government has $10 million worth of gold. If they were following the gold standards, that means there would only be $10, $10 million worth of money circulating, right? Um, the paper money, though, is not supported by the gold standard, and so they can produce, say, $20 million worth of cash, even though they only have $10 million of gold to back it up. Um, and so many people, particularly financial conservatives, and wealthy people saw it as 
an issue, right? That it was being irresponsible. You have all this money and you actually have nothing to back it up with. And so they wanted to eliminate the greenback and go back to the gold standard. Many small business owners and farmers, particularly in the South, uh, saw this as um, a good thing, the greenbacks, because it increased the money supply and allowed them to pay their debts, allowed them to buy materials they needed. Uh, and so they advocated for expanding the greenbacks. Um, and so this major debate over the greenbacks and the gold standard, uh, which stays in the United States um, throughout the, up to the period really of the Great Depression, uh, draws attention even more away from the Reconstruction efforts, and it made many people who supported the greenbacks um, angry with Republicans because the Republican Party uh, advocated for return to the gold standard and eventually does return to the gold standard a couple years after this debate starts. Something that people don't often think about a lot, but does have a lot of importance, right, is what happens in, in uh, court cases, right, in the United States. Uh, and judicial support for Reconstruction fades away as the Civil War kind of uh, is further, further in the past. So in the early 1870s, right, certain cases, like the Slaughterhouse cases, made by the Supreme Court, decide that the 14th Amendment, which gives all people due process to the law, right, equal access to the law, uh, applied to national rights, though not state rights. And so it kind of limited the power of the national government to come into states and say, you're not following this, right? Only things that clearly belong to the national government's rights, uh, national government's um, powers could be protected by the 14th Amendment, right? So this allowed the states in the South to pass discriminatory laws uh, if, it was, if it was only within the state that it was happening. Um Kind of another further problem with, with these judicial support was uh, in 1876, right, in the 14th Amendment then, it's, it's, it's decided not only can it not support, it cannot influence states' rights, but also the national government, the federal government, has no power to punish people who violate the laws, right? And so it takes away the enforcement wing of the federal government. And another really important one, um, in the same year, I believe, the U.S. versus Reese, right, and this is the 15th Amendment, which bars people from discriminating for voting based on race, they decide though that other requirements are not necessarily banned based on that. And so what you see happen in the South in the Jim Crow era, which is going to follow Reconstruction, are things like, yes, they don't say black people cannot vote, but they say people who do not pass the literacy test, people do not own property, right? People whose grandfathers did not vote could not vote, right? The grandfather, grandfather clause, it's called. And these things, without actually saying it, end up disenfranchising or preventing essentially almost every black person in the South from voting. And so eventually, uh, you have what the white Confederate, former Confederates call redemption, right? And so in the state governments in the South, Southern Democrats regain control. They're reelected with all these things. They have the power to prevent blacks from kind of voting, Republican, and so the Democrats get into power. Uh, and then 1876 election, right? Um, Grant no longer runs because of all the scandals. And so a new Republican named uh, President Rutherford B. Hayes Runs against, runs against the Democrat named Sam, Samuel Tilden. And so Samuel Tilden, the Democrat, actually wins the popular vote, um, but he loses the electoral vote by one vote, right? And so this might sound familiar to people, right, because the most recent election of President Trump, right, he did not win the popular vote, but he did win the electoral college vote, right, and so he became president. The issue here, though, this was the first time this happened in American history. It's only happened, I think, four of the times. Um, the issue, though, here is not only did he lose by just one popular uh, one electoral vote, there was actually a couple electoral votes from that were being disputed. That it wasn't clear that they were being voted was sent put into the right um, right candidate. And so there's an electoral dispute here. There's a, a compromise is eventually made the next year for the next uh, for the inauguration that the Republicans will get the presidency. So President Hayes is inaugurated, but in return they withdraw federal troops and federal funding. Um, from the South, and that essentially is the end then of Reconstruction, right? There's no more federal effort to stop stop uh, Southern Democrats from discriminating against African Americans.